All right, I'm gonna push this data pipeline to production. Okay, go for it. Wait, team, what's happening? Why are we being charged $1.2 million already? Uh, what? Calvin, a software engineer at Shopify and his team were tasked with building a data pipeline for a new marketing tool for Shopify merchants. This data pipeline would be rolled out for a small selected group of merchants as part of their early release. The merchant data were sent to Kafka and ingested using Apache Flink to perform various calculations. Kafka is a distributed streaming platform that is used for building real-time data pipelines and streaming applications. It uses a publish subscribe model. In this model, producers generate data to a topic and any systems that are subscribed to that specific topic can read the data once it is available. Topics in Kafka serve as logical containers for data, acting as categories or feeds where records are written by producers and read by consumers. Topics can be partitioned into multiple segments spread across the cluster brokers. The brokers are responsible for receiving data from producers storing it in topics and forwarding it to consumers, while also managing replication and partitioning for high availability and fault tolerance. Using Kafka as an intermediate layer between the data sources and Apache Flink can provide several advantages when working with distributed and real-time data processing. One, it decouples the producers and the consumers. This decoupling allows for flexibility and scalability by allowing both data producers and consumers to write and read data respectively at their own pace. Two, it helps protect against buffering and back pressure handling. Bursts of data or temporary load spike can happen and Kafka can buffer and prevent overwhelming Apache Flink with data. Three, data retention and replayability to recover from failures. Apache Flink is a framework designed for processing streams of data. Upon receiving the data, Apache Flink performs various calculations and uses RocksDB, a key value store optimized for fast storage for storing state. The stateful approach enables Flink to maintain historical context or patterns of the process data. This works with their very small limited subset of merchants. However, they were already ingesting over 1 billion rows of data even with just this small subset. A quick Google search shows that Shopify has over 1 million merchants across the globe. Therefore, this data pipeline would not be sustainable after the initial release. They aim to streamline their workflow by outsourcing certain tasks from the Apache Flink pipeline to an external SQL-based data warehouse. In this setup, Flink would simply submit queries to the data warehouse, which in turn would write the results directly to Google Cloud Storage. This essentially means that data ingestion can be entirely removed from the pipeline, allowing the external data warehouse to manage it. This approach aims to boost the overall throughput of Apache Flings for their general release. When considering which data warehouse to consider, it needed to meet three criteria. One, atomically load the data set daily, can handle 60 requests per minute with ease. Three, can export the results to Google Cloud Storage. The data warehouse they ultimately chose was BigQuery, a platform specifically designed for large scale data processing and analytics. It can easily store petabytes of data. I don't actually even know how big that is. Damn, that's big. What's even more impressive is that you can query against a very large data set in a matter of seconds. Shopify already had an internal tool that Calvin and his team could use to load their initial billion rows of data into BigQuery. After the data load was completed, they ran their first query and got back a very interesting log message. A single query was scanning through 75 gigabyte worth of data. Yikes. Remember how one of their criteria was to be able to handle 60 requests per minute? Why don't we perform some calculations? 60 requests per minute times 60 minutes per hour times 24 hours a day times 30 days in a month equals to 2,592,000 queries per month. Multiply that by 75 gigabyte, that is equals to 194,400 terabytes worth of data scanned each month. According to big queries on demand pricing at the time, that would have costed them 949,218.75 USD per month. Nani? That's almost enough to buy a box to live in Toronto, but still that's insane. 
Okay, what's going on? While the exact query is not known, it likely resembles a scenario where they select everything from a table based on some certain conditions, such as timestamp and geography. If the data in BigQuery isn't sorted using these criteria, the platform would need to scan through countless rows to identify all the data meeting the specified where conditions. They knew that they had to cluster their tables. Clustering means that you are sorting your data based on one or more columns in your table. These columns are and usually the fields defined in the WHERE condition. For example, using the previous query, we can cluster on the columns timestamp and geography. By doing so, BigQuery will only scan relevant data within the specified conditions, resulting in a significant reduction in the amount of data being scanned. After applying the clustering to their tables, the exact same query log scans show only 108.3 megabyte of data. Isn't that amazing? Let's redo our cost calculation. 2,592,000 queries per month times 0.1 gigabyte only equals to 259,200 gigabyte of data scan per month. According to Shopify, this optimization brought down their cost to only $1,370 USD per month. While clustering resulted in a big W for them, they didn't stop there. They realized that there are additional ways to optimize costs. One, avoid using the select star statement. Only select columns that you need to limit the engine scan. Two, partition your tables. If you can determine how you're querying your data, partitioning your data can significantly reduce the amount of scanning being done. Three, don't run queries to explore or preview data. This can result in unnecessary costs. BigQuery provides a preview option to view your data instead for free. This is what I love about software engineering and system designs. These concepts of partitioning your data and clustering them can be applied in real life and can produce amazing results. As seen in this example, the data pipeline went from costing almost $1 million USD to just $1K in one month. I hope that you were able to learn something from this video and maybe even apply it at your job. Let's start the year strong together and as always, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.